This tabletop turned into a lot bigger job than what I thought it was going to be. What's up y'all? My name's Andy. This is EPS Garage. Today, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this large, solid walnut tabletop. Tabletop only, no legs. It was a commission job. This kind of has a funny story to it. The customer asked if I could plane a couple pieces of wood, join them, because she was making some type of tabletop for behind a couch. At first, I thought, well, hell, just come on over. We'll run them through my planer. We'll join them on the table saw if we're able to. Probably stand there and wait for me, you know, while we do this. I'm happy to help out a fellow woodworker that maybe just doesn't have all the tools because that's what I thought. I thought maybe she just didn't have all the tools. She just needed the planer, get them straightened up, and then she was going to do the rest, you know, gluing them up and finishing it all and, you know, the fun stuff. But when she showed up, I found out that it was a lot more than that, and I totally misunderstood her. These boards needed to be plain, jointed, and glued up. And if the price was right, go ahead and sand them, finish them, totally finish the table outright. She had some legs that she wanted to order, and she was going to install those herself. So she just needed the tabletop done, and done well. The boards, they were large too. They were about eight foot long. Each one was roughly seven inches wide. And I would say about an inch and three quarter, maybe a little less thick. So they were large to be putting through my 13 inch tabletop planer. And I, it's gonna take some work. Here's how it went. I did run into some troubles, some errors. I ended up having to make a whole nother device to do all this. Um, I talk about it in the video and it actually ended up giving me two YouTube videos. That one will come out after this. So hopefully you liked the video. If you do, don't forget to hit like and subscribe y'all. That helps us out as the content creator. And also leave your comments. If you have any comments, I love to hear them. Check it. First step of this entire process, I ran it through my planner just to make sure I had a you know, reference flat surface. So then from there, I can look down and actually see how flat and true these boards really are. Okay, a little bit of a problem. These boards are a little bit warped. I've got to fix that. The sled I have for my planer in order to take warpness out, because I don't have a joiner, is not long enough to accommodate an eight foot board. So this is where this video kind of splits into two videos. Stay tuned. I'm going to continue on in this video, just, you know, I'll show real quickly it on the sled, but there will be another video where I show how I build my sled, how I shim it and all that to get a nice flat surface. If you want to see that, stay tuned, you know, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hang around. Like I said, I'm not going to get a lot of detail here, but here I am using this sled. Uh, if you stay tuned, the next video will be how I built the sled. Really simple, but I'll show you how I use it and give more detail. But basically the sled allows you to run it through, get one side flat. As you can see here, it's starting to remove the pencil marks and you can see the board starting to get flatter and flatter. Once you get one side flat, then you can flip the board over and run it through your planer without the sled. Then you have a truly flat board. And that's what I accomplished here. But stay tuned, you'll see that video. Well, as we already discussed, I don't have a joiner. So I had to get the edges jointed as well. Once the tops and bottoms were nice and flat, what I did is I ran them through my table saw. Now I was only able to do this with these boards because these boards already had one edge that was milled nice and flat. So I didn't have to make any type of certain jig in order to run these through my saw to get a flat surface. Worked out really well. If you had two sides that were not flat to each other and you couldn't do it this way, you would have to make a jig to where you could edge them. Anyways, there's plenty of videos on that. Maybe I'll do one one day. Um, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. To get ready for the glue up, I did a mock fit up. I just wanted to make sure my joint was nice and tight, you know, no gaps. And you can see right here, it actually turned out really well. And that's all done on the table saw, no jig or anything. I'm going to use Type Bond 3 for this project, mainly because Type Bond 2 I was almost out of, but I, Type Bond 3 is all right. I mainly stick to Type Bond 3 though on projects that are going to be exposed to water, but it is a really good glue, so I'm using it for this project as well. 
Now this wood has some really nice knots and anytime wood has knot holes in it, I like to use those as accents in my, in my work. So here I am removing any glue around them because later on I'm gonna be filling those with epoxy and I didn't want the glue to spill into the knot hole and make it very difficult to get out. So just something to think, you know, looking ahead on your project. But in this case, I didn't want glue in the knot hole. That way when I pour the epoxy, it was nice and clear. Once I got all my glue all spread, I was able to put the boards together and the beauty of doing that pre-fit up is I already have my clamps that are out that I need. I already know where my clamps are gonna go. I have a plan. For a long time, I was really bad about doing this and planning your glue up before you do it is huge in the success of your glue up. Just remember that, it'll help. And you can see here, no glue in the knot holes. It's gonna look great for the epoxy. And speaking of epoxy, I didn't even wait for the glue to dry. I went ahead and started the epoxy process ASAP. I am using a new epoxy called Premier. It ended up working out really well and I liked it. All right, this isn't an epoxy video, but I'll go ahead and give you a little details. Anyways, with my epoxy, I always wear gloves. I always use a scale to measure it out. This particular epoxy is one part, one part. So if you're only needing a little bit, do a half ounce and a half ounce, mix them and you're good. So it's very simple for this epoxy and I, it's really about it. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because that's not what this video is about. But I did do a few videos on epoxy, so feel free to check those out. On my epoxy, whatever it tells you to mix it, I always mix it longer. However, this epoxy, most epoxy says to mix it like three three minutes. This epoxy I've never used before. I wanted to try a new one, you know, try new stuff out. And it said to mix five to eight minutes. So I think I'm going to keep it probably to the high side, eight minutes. So far, I'm really liking the way this looks mixed up. Very little bubbles. I did one ounce and one ounce. All right, got it all mixed. Let me see if I can show you this. So I think what I'm going to do here is got my little brush. I'm just going to pour a little bit in there, or actually I'm going to let it drip in there like that. Take my brush, get it all in there. Anytime you're doing epoxy, you want what's called a seal coat, especially on wood, to prevent the bubbles. So that's what this was. I put a light coat in there, let it cure. And then I'm able to do the, what they call a flood coat a little later. It's about 10 o'clock at night. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the clamps while I'm here. I'm also going to do the final epoxy pour for the knot holes. I did a little flood coat earlier. And you can wait about three hours and pour the final coat. Now I just, I don't want to wait. I, I'm short on time, so that's why I'm doing it now, 10 o'clock at night, stop my movie. <laughs> but I, I wanted to get this done. That way tomorrow this is fully cured and I can keep working on it. That's the plan. Measure this out. And I don't need very much epoxy at all. Half ounce of each. So, Hey, if y'all got any good ideas for a video that you'd like to see, um, put them in the comments. My last few videos, I haven't done that well. It kind of gets discouraging, you know. I don't know what the what's going on with the algorithm or what. Hell, you just never know. Like some videos, tons of views. And then the last few videos, I guess they're just not interesting. Maybe my thumbnail sucks. I don't know. What's y'all's thoughts? But if y'all have a video you'd like to see, maybe something that specifically you think I could do or that you'd like to see me do, I'm interested. All ears. Maybe I should do a whole video on epoxy. You know, I don't really use it a whole lot. I don't, I've never done the river table or anything. 
I try to stay away from the stuff where I feel like it's an oversaturated market. You see it everywhere. Kind of steer clear of that. It's like, like cutting boards, charcuterie boards. I don't make those unless somebody specifically asked me to make one. I did that one video. You can watch it. It was actually I think it was my first cutting board I ever made. But they're easy to make. Now, not all of them are easy. Some people make some amazing cutting boards where they're like 3D patterns and all that. That stuff's crazy. But overall, there's just a saturated market, you know. Not to mention, you get sued. Better have an LLC. So maybe some food poisoning from a cutting board. Better make sure you're, you're covered on that one. All right. How long has it been? Not quite long enough. In case you're curious, I'm a horror movie buff. If you watch my videos, you probably see my Halloween specials. So you may know that. But I'm watching uh, Blood Red. It's a German movie. It's pretty good so far. I think it's vampires. I just started it a few minutes ago, about a half hour ago. We'll see how it goes. I think it's good enough. Been about five minutes. All right. I will check this in the morning, see how it turned out. I think this is going to be really pretty. The epoxy is hard. After this, I guess I'll run it through the planer a few times. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a quarter inch chamfer on it. The reason being is one edge popped out, kind of broke off. It had a crack we saw at the beginning when the boards came in. And we thought that might happen. So the option was either try to glue it back on, quarter inch chamfer, go with chamfer. I think it'll look very nice. And then we're going to go ahead and put a finish on it. And that's it. This will be ready. Um, the customer who ordered this, she's going to put the legs on it. Um, I'll be done with it once that's complete. This is pretty easy. Well, I was really lucky this board did not end up being wider than my planer. Uh, it was about 12 and 5 eighths. My planer is 13 inch planer, so it worked out good. But I ran each side through there a couple times. Didn't really need to do that much, but just to get the high spots down and take some of the epoxy down before sanding. Next step is I wanted to trim off the ends and make them perfectly square. So I used a straight edge and my circular saw. Uh, this is a method I use all the time. Works really well. The customer decided to go with a chamfer around it. So this was quick and easy. I just took my palm router and went around it with, a, I believe it was a quarter inch chamfer. Might have been a half inch, I can't remember now. But just went all the way around it, gave it a nice little chamfered edge. Not gonna go in detail on boring sanding, but I'll tell you what I did. I started it at 120, I ended at 220 using my random orbital sander. And then from there, I did go up to 500 and even 1000 by hand, but that was kind of like in between coats to knock down the fuzzies. So uh, other than that, it was pretty simple. Now here's a trick for you. When you're all done sanding, and you, you think you got it all good, go ahead, spray it down with some water, then let it dry. That's gonna allow the grain to rise, all those little fuzzies. Then you can come back through with like a thousand grit or something, knock those fuzzies down, and then it's ready for your finish. And we decided to go with a water-based polyurethane. I like it, it goes on easy, and it turns out great. So even though I went ahead and sprayed this down with water and let the grain pop, let it dry, sand it down again, I still have more grain popping out. One of the things I learned from Steve Ramsey, Woodworking for Mere Mortals, one of my favorite channels, is use craft paper to buff it down. I'm telling you, this stuff works. <laughs> really good you should give it a try if you haven't done it yet but it'll really see i got these little where i put the chamfer little tiny hairs that pop up gone just craft paper works good that's it this was a lot bigger job than what i thought but hey i overcame and it turned out great i'm really 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 happy with how it turned out actually I kind of wish this was my tabletop but um, the customer she was really happy with it as well and I'm hoping hoping I get some pictures of it all set up with the legs on it before this video comes out 
If so, I'll put them in here and you'll see them. But if not, go to my Facebook page. If you haven't checked it out, I put a lot of stuff on there you don't see here on YouTube. So go ahead and check it out. It's always linked in the description at the very bottom with my email and all that stuff. Until next time, y'all stay safe and make sure you're having fun making this stuff. I'll see you later. A lot more than what I thought originally. Am I literally reading off my script, Andy? What? <laughs> Take two. Let's get rid of this. From the beginning. This story is uh, kind of... Uh, Take three.